Hey, happy Saturday, everyone. Um, this is uh, another episode of Welcome to My Bubble. Can I be a stickler r real quick? Just and, and then I'll take off because I don't. I, I'm taking over too much of the conversation. But uh, <laughs> no, you're fine, if, Jimmy. You're fine. Just stick around. What if the shop? I mean, what if the shop in Harian just says that the real illusion at the, is that there's any conscience at all? That then there's would, anything to have an illusion about in the first place. Then, then they've made a scientific claim that is easily disprovable. Right? Voltaire told us that uh, when it's nature versus nurture, that we're a blank slate. And nature, I mean, sorry, nurture is everything there is. I think he said something along the lines of mankind does not come with moral prescriptions, but comes with the capacity of learning them. Something along those lines. Basically, he's saying nurture is all that matters. There is no natural aspect. There is no conscience. But the idea there is no conscience is literally an absurd notion if you're familiar with evolutionary psychology. Independent cultures have come up with the, with the term science, I mean, sorry, conscience, with a moral sense. Um, they called it Taboa in Africa. They called it Ren in China. Socrates talks about it, calls it an inner daemon. It's a, it's a universally attested to experience, and you can use evolutionary psychology not only to say that people have it, but to demonstrate that they have it, to show that people are capable of navigating social and moral norms at the earliest of ages, and to even identify individual intuitions that they have. So to just deny that conscience is a real thing is to take, I think, a scientifically untenable approach. Isn't it a good thing to have a Christian agenda when you're looking at things like philosophy? And I think when you have all the passages you're referencing there about not getting taken up with the worldly philosophies, I think are actually saying, not saying like science is bad or philosophy is bad, but discouraging you from following charlatans or bad philosophy. Like when when Thomas is critiqued for doubting, I don't think it's saying doubt is an inherently bad thing. I think it's saying Thomas's doubt is a bad thing. Because if you live with literally the person you believe is God incarnate and he performs miracles and he get, tells you after seeing millions of miracles or however many he's done that he's going to do one more miracle and now you decide to doubt, that is the epitome of irrational. It goes against all of your experiences. And you have passages in the scripture that say things like, he performed these miracles so that they would have faith. Faith isn't just blindly believing uh, the Christian answer. It's, it's trusting the evidence available to you. So when he gives them faith, he's giving them evidence. That's the same thing there. When you have, I quote at the end of my videos, um, test everything, hold on to the good. Right? So this concept of faith, I think, in our modern culture has become associated with blindly believing something. But I think the term itself means something more akin to rationally trusting something. Faith would be a terrible thing if you put your faith in something blindly or if you put your faith in something or you trusted something that didn't have evidence uh, to backing it up. Trusting a um, girlfriend who cheats on you regularly is a bad idea. Faith would be bad in that instance. So I think the entire um, concept of faith only becomes a good thing in Christianity because Christianity happens to be true. And if it was not true or there was not good evidence for it, then I think faith would be a bad thing. Yeah. Is, it, is it bad for a Christian to, to come into these, these other philosophical topics and be uh, willing to look at the evidence, but also be completely unwilling to test whether or not um, what they believe in concerning Christ's deity or, or the Trinity or things of that nature? Is it... Is it uh, is it okay, on your view, to not test those things? Is it okay to not say, you know, I'm hypo hypothetically going to not believe this for a minute and see whether or, it, whether or not it turns out to be true? I think you must, as the verse says, test everything and hold on to the good. There's, there's another passage, I want to say Galatians, but I'm not positive, where it says the equivalent of this. Uh, if Jesus has not risen, then your hope is in vain. As in, if it ain't true, then your faith is worthless. So I think it's uh, an imperative, not just as a Christian, but as a human, to try and figure out what things are true. And if Christianity is true, only then is your faith good. Just before we go on air, that I, was, I was saying that I wanted to chat with you about how you take your, um, when you're teaching now, um, and have to, um, it's along the same lines of having views that you have that you have to leave at the door of the classroom to come in and teach or, or, and I don't know if that's how it works, but can you talk about your teaching experience a little bit in the context of your Christian faith? 